Okay. Yeah, I love the music. We serve her who was buried in Mother Let us try to do this. And maybe we save just in case crazy things happen, because it sounds like crazy things might happen. We let us through. Okay, so uh, he doesn't like light. Totally normal thing. Hey, um, what's up? Guy who may or may not be cursed. And then a giant sea snake swam up and bit my arm off. The gods have spoken. A sacrifice is needed. To my mind, it's about you defeating a snake, Yah. No. Huh? They demand a sacrifice. I'm sure of it. It's time. We must wait for a clearer sign. At least till your next dreaming. I don't need no more signs. Mm, are you just dead set on sacrificing after sacrificing? Something tells me you're making a habit out of this. Ceres, heard she stayed here. On Crate's daughter. Aye, she was here. Where is she now? Hmm. What? Ceres. Where's Ceres? Dunno. Dunno. Enough of the questions. Um. Okay. That was a little odd. Also, okay, let's see. Where is Ceres? What happened to him? Uh, him being the person we just spoke to. He does definitely seem off. I say something wrong. You must forgive the Earl. Hasn't been feeling well of late. Is he sick? He didn't seem quite right during Croc's feast, but... I didn't really <gasps> notice him at Croc's forgive feast. Me. I must go to him. Okay. Where's Ceres? I've got to find her. Uh, I don't know. Ask around. Very Great. helpful. Remember that Character added Ulrich. Right. And George. Ask about Saris in the village. And quest updated. And hold on. Let's eavesdrop. Oh, are those these guys were actually overhearing? I think it's actually these guys were overhearing. <laughs> Never mind. Not that important in that case. Uh, is in this direction? Might be well. I mean, doesn't really seem to be any people in here. But we'll take your apple juice, Carol's favorite. I'll have you know. Raspberry juice. That's uh, I'm afraid it's a distant third. I think that's everything in here then. Oh, and I was interested to read up a little bit on this guy we were just meeting. Because very mysterious. Bran is the former king. King Bran, which you now deceased, but King Bran, former king of the Skelga Isles, lived a long and storied life. When he finally fell decrepit felt decrepitude taking a hold of him, he went into the woods to hunt a bear armed with only a knife, and thus ended his reign. It was remembered as an honorable and respected one though some complained that he preferred raiding to confronting the Isle's long-term problems, that he let his wife's tongue wag too freely. Some connected the two, claiming Bran sailed out to fight overseas battles to put off dealing with the ones awaiting him at a home. Okay. Uh, Saris, we sort of already know about you. Um, but the person who I really want to check... I'm kind of curious how significant Full End really is, but I think it's mostly just a random guy who happened to be along with Yalmer. But, uh, not Madman, not you. Uh, this is Mad Castaway from Moonvik. This is the guy that disappeared on us. News of the giant's death clearly delighted the Madman, but he rejected the Witcher's offer to take him back to Ard Skelga. I mean, we didn't actually do that, but... Wait, what? In the end, Geralt learned the true identity of the mad shipbuilder of Unvik. He was, in fact... Harold Houndsnout, a Jarl who was thought to have been killed by the giant along with his crew. Though rumors about his death were clearly exaggerated, it was hard to say whether surviving had not proved the worst fate, because he has clearly lost his mind. News of the giant's death clearly delighted the madman, but he rejected the Witcher's offer to take him back to Ard Skellig. 
could not live with the knowledge that he had failed as leader of his clan and thus was determined to build a ship to serve as his funeral pyre. Okay, we didn't really hear that, or we absolutely did not hear that from him. And uh, we went back to the ship and we didn't find him. This is the person I want to hear about. Geralt's private talk with the Jarl confirmed the rumors. Ulrich was convinced that God spoke to him, sending him prophetic dreams and demanding he make sacrifices. Yeah. Like I said, it seemed like maybe the sacrifices were a, a common thing. It seemed like he was just dead set on make excuse me. You nearly hit us. Rude. Okay, but who do we ask about where we might find Ceres? Maybe the butcher we saw before, or the random Skelga woman? Greetings. Ha! Nary a soul for months. Then one day guests from afar start dropping like rain in springtime. I, I guess. You weary traveler. Hungry. Uh, we're looking for a woman named Ceres. Looking for Ceres, Jarl on Crate's daughter. Ah, you found her. Or near to. Last was just here. Okay, yeah, that's a good sign. Be. Took an interest in our Jarl. Asked about his childhood. So I told her to see Berg Thora and Eirik. Uh, who are they? Who are Berg Thora and Eirik? Years ago, Eirik was close to nice the Jarl. Was the Jarl that helped him win Berg Thora's hand. They lived toward the east end of the village. Okay. So just more people Take care. in the village somewhere? Bless you. And my blessings to Ceres when you see her. Okay. Oh, we might have potentially been able to talk to a bunch of people here, but it seems though maybe we got the answer right to begin with. Like this girl, do you know? Nope. Or is, or is it these two right here? Fisherman? Sorry to interrupt. You need something? Come, let's have a pint of the chat. Oh, uh, I, I mean, we're mostly just looking for Ceres. Thanks, but I'm short on time. Looking for a girl named Ceres. Krachan Crate's daughter. She was here, but I've not seen her away. Okay. Uh, that Take care. Doesn't really help us, but I think we may already have the answers that we need. You vote right. We don't really need. To... Oh, here's one of the people we're looking for. Greetings. Yes. Yeah? I'm looking for someone. <laughs> Lucky chap you are then. Truth be told, I'm taken. But village is Oh, well, I, I see what you're trying to say, but no, that, that's actually not what we meant. <laughs> Geralt, no. I'm looking for Ceres. The skinny thing. Lovely doe eyes, true, and she's from an honorable house. But the lass is gaunt as a sapling. I don't know where she Still is. Still not really father. what we're trying to <laughs> say, Tell but... Tell crack to calm down. No Skellige lass can perish in her own isles. All right, she was here a few hours. Went to find me man, Eirik. Needed to talk, she said. They should be on the beach, t'other side of the isle. Thanks. Take care. Good luck searching. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. what, what about the uh-oh? Find Eirik, who is apparently with Ceres, on a beach on the other side of the isle. The isle is small. That's up here. Okay, why don't we head in that direction and then... We could even... Do we track over this building here? Not sure we did. I mean, it sort of looks like it's part of the village, but then there's this question mark over here, which suggests that maybe this is not, uh, not close enough to the village to be all that safe. Might be a bandit camp or something. And then, I mean, it's a little bit out of the way, but then we'll head north from there, I think. Try that out. Get a couple things done that way. Give us a little bit of time now to explore the island a bit more. See what else it has to show us. If anything, well, I mean, it's got to have something, right? So, at least at the moment, mostly just the village, and definitely does look like some other settlement of some sort. So that is, no, that's the part where we're, that would be this building here. I suppose in some ways might be the best way to get here if we are to follow the actual path. So, sure, I suppose let's, let's go this way then. And it is fairly close to the village. So I, it'd be weird if it was a bandit 
encampment of some sort. What is what is the deal here? Something tells me, yeah, we're gonna end up over here. Damn, something seriously wrong here. Yeah. Let's um let's save that for a little later, because there were some red things there. We're definitely tied to some kind of quest. I don't know if that was the Witcher contract or if that was um actually the possession quest, but let's not whoa, those goats I guess fly through the roof. But let's not uh do things way out of order there. Unless there I mean there might be someone in here we could speak to that might tell us about that quest, but apparently not. Um Except the thing is in order to get to this spot. I'm not sure we can do it without going through that building because, well, otherwise, to cut through, we need to go over this mountain, which, uh, I mean, maybe it's possible if we do, like, this, but this is not gonna end well. This is not gonna end. <laughs> this is a very bad idea. We have tried doing things like this before, and it never, never is a good idea. I can say that pretty definitively. We almost, oh, in fact, we did actually make it up there miraculously, but uh, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna work. It's the thing. Like, you can't climb this. This is too steep. This is almost a ninety degree angle. Maybe if we really wanted to. We could try going from this angle, but even then, that is still too steep. So. We can try walking around like this, but this is a lot of trouble for something that I think ultimately is something that we should just end up waiting for. Oh, more hunters. Okay. I mean, a little concerned for a second there again with you, you know, shooting arrows in our general direction and all. It tends to be things that, say, you know, adversaries like to do. People who want to see us dead. So I don't believe we fall into that category. I, I think we are technically on the other side of the mountain now. And therefore, may be possible. Oh, uh, no, we are, well, I mean, kind of, sort of, but not really. Headed toward this question mark now. Totally opposite direction. Yeah, let's, let's refocus on that part there. I think this is uh, be turning into something entirely different. Not really what we were trying to sign up for. So let us head back in this direction. And we could also instantly summon Roach, I think. But uh, especially on a small island like this, where it's not that much ground to cover, and most of it is still new to us, of course, because we, for the most part, just got here. And I think that uh, it's fine for us to walk. Didn't take us too long. Oh, there's actually, there's a tavern here? Hold on. Hold on. How do we miss this? How do we miss this? Because if we can speak to the innkeep, then we could probably maybe buy some Gwent cards, maybe play you at Gwent, and maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll take it from there. There is still an alcoholic beverage that we need to create the White Gulp. Want a drink? What kind of entertainment you got in mind? What? Why beer, mead, and strong spirits? What do you expect in a tavern? Jump poop? I don't know, it was kind of weird the way you from, phrased it. But I can see it's far off. Okay, so... Yeah, what can you tell us about the clan, actually? The Brockvar clan. Can you tell me about it? We from the Brockvar clan are masters of the sea. Bred and born to the water. Not everyone in sure, Skelga yeah, time in the that water. seemed to be uh, applicable <laughs> to everyone in Skelga. They think so too, but all they do is skim the top of it in their long ships, all wrapped up in heavy furs. From time to time, the wind blows a bit of spray from the oars in their faces. That's their only contact with water. Whereas our boys, as soon as they can walk, dive off cliffs into the very depths of the sea. Okay, fair enough, I guess. Show me what you have in stock. You have more cards, so that's good. And hold on, hold on. Vain herbal. 
I need Cherry Cordial's not one of the ones we need. Tamarian Rye is not. Nor is Dwarven Spirit. Don't think those are any of the ones we need. But the cards will definitely take these. Let's see. Ice Giant. You don't say. You don't say. All right, sure. Five Strength and Seedro is not great. Arrakis is Muster, and we did just get an Arrakis card, so that does work well with that. And then Vampire Ekimara is another Muster. So, okay, those are starting to add up a bit. And Foglet is just a bad card, but we'll take it because we do still need it. Okay. And then let's play you at Gwent, I think. Are you going to have monster cards based on how every card you're trying to sell some monsters? Maybe. What would you say to a little game of Gwent? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say anything, actually, technically, but... So, what do we do? Scoitel last time? Maybe we go for a Nilf guard this time around, then? We go first. Well, actually, Northern Realms. How dare they use Northern Realms against us and use the same leader ability that we always use. Okay, so that does mean that we may have a decent sense as to what to expect from them. Okay, so we have Decoy, we have Melee Nerf, which I don't really think is a nerf we want to have, as much as a Siege Nerf would be really strong. Commander's Horns, double in a row, okay. I don't even remember what our leader ability is. This is the look at our opponent's hand leader ability. Medic with zero strength. Two of the Imperial Brigade Guards, which brings them up to six strength apiece, which is okay. It's not great. More 6 strength, more 6 strength, 10 strength, and 10 strength. This is a pretty weak hand. I think we definitely want to get rid of the melee nerf because we have enough cards in the melee row that we are going to be almost certainly hurting ourselves more than we are hurting our opponent. Oh look, it's the Frangilla Vigo card that I love to hate. The amazing 6 strength and range row, so rare, so powerful. Uh, what else? Deco, I mean, we could potentially swipe a spy if they have a spy. We don't necessarily know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, basically all of our cards are... Most of our cards are... Eh, they're, they're okay. They're not great. Exceptions being Letho and Black Infantry Archer. Maybe even the Medic. I don't know about that. I'm almost tempted to try to swap them out suppose we could use a, a combo with the decoy to... Yeah, we can still use the decoy to, to double play. I don't love the hand, but I think we'll roll with it. We go first as well. Which is... not great. I guess we'll throw down one Imperial Brigade Guard and with the three strength it's unlikely our opponent will try to do anything to it. If they really wanted to, they could. Yeah, here we're going to see a bunch of things happening in the range row, or in the siege row, rather. And we would love to have a nerf for the siege row, because they can double it. Speaking of doubling, there's our Dublin, and they could scorch now if they really want to. Well, okay, well, they have a melee nerf. We may have gotten rid of our own, but they have their version of it. So uh, that really hurts, because we have a lot of melee cards. So I'm thinking we might stop the melee now use our medic in the future round to bring one of them back decoy to get back the medic and bring the other imperial brigade guard back so we have both of them that means that if we are to continue playing cards here we want to go with either something other than cards in the melee row so it could be frangie lavigo it could be siege engineer or it could be a hero like uh, letho or even infantry black archer though this is uh, i want to save him so I'm thinking, what strength does our opponent have? Precisely six. Let's just throw down a card that forces our opponent to keep on playing more. And they will double siege. Okay, with only one siege card out there is, I mean, presumably a sign that they're gonna play more. So, and also remember that they are Northern Realms, so when they win a round, they will draw an additional card. So if we were to pass when we have the same number of cards, then bear in mind that we'll actually turn into them having card advantage. That's a bit of a concern as well. Throw this down. Puts us back in the lead, but we are definitely down cards relative to them. Okay, if you want to play heroes, yikes. Um, 
Yeah, this is getting tricky. We might need to cut our losses. It does kind of just look like they have a better better deck than us. And that, you know, we play a three strength card, they play a six strength card. We play another three strength card that turns both into six strength cards, they nerf both of our six strength cards down to two. We play a six strength card, they play a ten strength card. And everything they've done has been better than us so far. Yeah, this is look at three cards in their hand. I do kind of like to say that one. So we'll pass here. I this is still not good. I don't like the way this is going right now, because they will draw another card. This is an opportunity for them to play a spy, and we would have loved to have stolen that spy. They have two spies. Well, we oh, we can actually double medic to bring the boat back. Okay. Hold on, that might actually be a blessing in disguise then. They have huge card advantage here, yes may mean that they deliberately pass early or throw down something big and then pass early and just take that huge card advantage into round three so uh we can't lose this round because we lost round one so as tempting as it is to just immediately go into playing all the spies that's still a bit of a risk though i guess it at least saves us a little bit from the danger of scorch because at this point if we're using our medic to bring back the spies, then we aren't going to be able to medic to bring back any units that we ourselves lose, nor will we be able to bring back the Imperial Brigade Guards, but I think this is still better than that. So we do this. Play Dijkstra. Draw two cards in the process. Fingers crossed we get two big heroes. That is definitely good. But speaking of two big heroes, you have two with 15 strength there. So now what we do is we decoy out of you. And we will replay the medic to play the other spy. Uh, your own medic. Uh, okay, then this. And the thing is now... So sure you have a bunch of heroes out there, but the Scorch would actually remove your own card, so you're not going to Scorch if you have one. And like I said, we don't really have a lot of ability to bounce back if we do get Scorched. So we're committing to the Spies here. And so now, well, we get another Medic. Okay, so now we are potentially capable of surviving that. Look at this. Bunch of heroes. This is looking like, despite someone who is a nobody, this person has a pretty decent deck. This is uh, similar to what we would be using for our own Northern Realms deck. Of course, our Northern Realms deck is pretty solid. So, uh, yeah. I mean, of course, they have a lot of the same cards, yes, but, like, even the good cards, they still have those. So, hmm. At this point, with only one medic and no decoy to play that medic twice, the Imperial Brigade Guards are no longer that good of an option to bring back, but they would have been equivalent to Frangie Levigo or the Siege Engineer anyway. So, in that case, I think what we do here could drop either of our big units then if it goes down we medic back into it is what I'm thinking otherwise we play some heroes and just make it so that the cards we have with strength are not able to get scorched at all hmm. I mean, we need to win this round otherwise we lose you already have 60 strength so I think what we do is we play heroes, and then I'm expecting our opponent to pass soon. Then once they pass, then we can start throwing out the, the 10 strength non-hero units, because then they'll be safer. We know they won't scorch them. Let's see. Yes, you will do exactly that. You will pass now. So I think we don't really have any choices here. We need to... Let's play... Uh... Thinking about doubling a row with our commander's horn and how best to do that. If we play you in the range row, and we also play the medic in the range row, that gets us to 11 in the range row, which could double up to 22. Still not enough, but what rows do we have here? I think we actually want to... Yeah, I think we go... You for 10 strength in the range row, then we'll use the medic to bring back Frangela Vigo, because that's six more strength. 
in the range row from her, as well as the one from the medic directly. And we are going to have to throw a lot in this just to win this round alone. Then we're not going to have a lot left over for the final round, which means probably still won't win this. Even if we take this round here, because, uh, well, as you can see, uh, our number is still not yet exceeding 60. So what is the most efficient way for us to do that? Would technically be to, what, throw this down and then another one of these? I think that's, that's what we got to do. Do this. And then I think we do go with the non-hero again, just so that way we're a little less susceptible to Scorches, because we don't have any Commander's Horns remaining, so there's just the risk of Scorch from that card there, whereas there's no risk of Scorch from the heroes. The heroes are objectively better in this scenario. So we pass here with two cards remaining, compared to their six. They are two somewhat strong cards, yes, and we do have our leader ability. I suppose let's lead off with that and just see what we're dealing with here, or at least some of what we're dealing with. And they have a Commander Sworn. They have a Trebuchet. That is 12 strength right there, or actually Siege Expert will boost the Trebuchet up to 7. Siege Expert is another one, so that's 8 in total in the Siege Row. Double the Siege Row bring you up to 16. That is already almost enough for them to win. And they have three more cards beyond that. There's a trebuchet. Play my foe. They just need one, basically one unit that we have not yet seen, and that would be enough. You know they have that. What else do you have, though? We are technically completely scorch proof. If your remaining cards are all scorched, that would actually mean we would win. But I'm doubtful of that. Yeah, you won. Yeah, so that that opponent's pretty good. I think we might need to go Northern Realms and just break out. I mean, partially just hope for a good hand that, but also we have a few cards I think that he did not have. We didn't see the dragon. We didn't see Taller, which is technically the best spy. So I think we give this another shot with Northern Realms. That, I think, is the plan. Let's do this. A little game of Gwent? And let's do... This. I think our deck should still be all set here. So let's hop in. They go first, okay. With a bit of a, a mirror match of sorts, in which we have much the same deck. Although this is not a great starting hand, or at least it doesn't look like it. Siege experts, unless we have a lot of siege happening. Well, we do. We do. Dandelion doesn't really have anyone to double in the melee row, so he is probably our worst card in this scenario, at least. And, okay, we have a ton happening in siege. This is not that bad. Actually, how much are the siege experts worth in this scenario? There are... The siege expert doesn't boost itself, but then it will boost the remaining cards in the siege row, including the other siege experts. So one, two... Three, four, five. Boosting, boosting by five? Or did I include the initial one in the process? I don't remember, but five or six. And then we have our leader ability that will boost the siege row. So yeah, that's solid. That is solid. A couple of medics is not bad either. I think we might want to get rid of the melee nerf though, because we are expecting our opponent to also be going pretty siege centric. I feel like there's going to be a lot of melee. Oh, and we drew into Vernon Roach. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. Okay, so I'm curious what direction they take here. And I think a lot of this will just come down to who plays smarter. So, hmm. I don't want to save the Catapult because it does have tight bond. So if we can win around and draw into a card and that happens to be the other catapult, then we'd love to have them both together. So for that reason, let's deliberately not, or at least try to avoid playing that in this round here. And then we want to play the, the medic, of course, or at least some of the medics in round two or maybe round three, but round one, they don't do much for us, at least not until other cards go down. So I'm a little bit reluctant to immediately play some of you. So that would make us have the highest card out there. So let's at least start off with the Siege Expert. 
And so we will copy each other. Okay. We're doubling the siege row, which is not a bad idea. In case we did have Scorch, that'd be fairly safe. But we can do functionally the same thing by playing this here, or at least in the short term, it does functionally. Well, I mean, you could Scorch now, and it would still hurt us more than it hurts you. Okay, Kiramets is not that great, given how she's 5 strength, and that's in the range row, which you have not doubled. So... I mean, at this point, yes, this will be Scorch Bait, but sure, we could bring it back if we had to. Okay, Triss, who's actually the weakest of the heroes. Lark still... You have a slight lead here. I'm thinking we can outpace if we continue to do this, and this is definitely Scorch territory now. Two of the strongest units out there with the same amount of strength means 16 uh, value out of that Scorch. I would think if they had it, they would use it. But now you have retaken the lead, and it is a slight lead at that. So... I mean, yes, we did do a lot in the Siege Row, and so we could potentially go all out in the Siege Row here, and then double it. Hmm. I think we actually do want to split the Catapults here, in that case, because then that means that we could always bring back a Catapult with a, a Medic, if we do happen to draw into the other Catapult. But I want to make sure that we don't have our two highest units on the playing field have the same amount, and then get Scorched and lose them both in the process. This was enough, though. Didn't need to use leader ability. So, it does mean that we invested most of our Siege units, yes, but we can bring back some of them, at least, with our medics. What do we draw into? Vesemir is not really what we were hoping for. So, huh. What I was thinking was that if our opponent was not Northern Realms, I would say we immediately pass force our opponent into playing one more card and that way we have card advantage going into round three if we do that against northern realms that means they play one card they'll have five to our six but as soon as they win then they draw another and it's six to six in round three so it doesn't really make any difference at all so i think what we do in that case is we throw away our worst card and we react to how our opponent plays if they play less than us ooh, then we pass and then they are forced to play another card and then they would um potentially go down cards in in round three or what we do is in the other case we play a relatively weak card they play a really strong card that allows them to surpass us in which case sure they can take the round to victory yes but it means that they're losing some of their best setup in the process and here Mets, like i said not great but the medic certainly is Five strength and the medic ability is pretty huge. So, for that reason, I think we'll take that. And we'll pass here and say we hang on to our medic, whereas you do not. But oh, actually, how did this happen? Now you're drawn up to six cards after you win? So you actually have card advantage? What? When did that happen? And well, more medics. Of course, we have that card as well, and we also have the other medic that you played. You really want to bring back Kira Mets. So I think obviously we need to win this round, and I think we just lead off with the heroes, because there's no reason not to. It means that if there is a Scorch, that our opponent will not want to play, because they'd be playing it on themselves, so like I said, no reason not to do it. Starting to look at what we'd want to bring back with the medics, and Catapult would be the obvious answer. That is our highest strength unit that we can bring back, and it is in the Siege Row, and we are going to use our leader ability to double the Siege Row. That's one thing, is we have our leader ability remaining, whereas our opponent does not. So I, I suppose in that way, we do have potentially a big advantage from that. But we will lead off with the heroes. All right, you have better heroes. Approach, I mean, we... We do have a fair number of them. There is that. We're up by one point here. But now you have Roach. How dare you? How dare you? Okay, so now at this point, we do need to use some medics that will bring back other cards. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. So that does mean that they will potentially be cards that get destroyed by a Scorch. 
And I think for that reason, let's... If we play you, then you can sort of hide behind the catapult that you bring in. Catapult would get scorched, and then we can bring back the catapult with the end of her. If, in fact, I do go that route. Lista is still a little bit lower than Catapult, so that would still be what would happen. Now we play Yen. Well, we play Yennefer now, or do we deliberately leave your ability first in case our opponent does scorch the Catapult with our last card, and that way we can bring it back with Yennefer? I think that is actually the way to go. Because the Catapult is slightly better than our other Siege cards. And you're also going to Commander's Horn in the Siege Row, but it's not going to be enough, and that was your last card. So, in that case, no Scorch and not enough for our opponent. We can layer on additional strength via Yennefer going into, it'd be just any of the six strength Siege cards, and double. And with that, I mean, it's not a huge lead, but it's a victory. Close match. And let's see what you have for us. Ghoul, another monster card. Okay, let's check it out. I mean, we certainly run into a lot of ghouls in the game, which leads me to believe that, or at least I would think maybe they're fairly weak at Quent as well, but we never really know. Where'd you go? Uh, oh, I was going to say you are absolutely atrocious. You do have muster, yes, but uh, still. One strength muster is, uh, is not much. We do have one more ghoul, at least. Okay, so at least your muster that is capable of bringing in some other units that also have that muster ability. If it is muster and you don't have any other units that fit that same description, then, uh, well, it is truthfully just a one strength unit and nothing else at all. So there's something for us. And then I lost track of what else we were trying to do in the meantime. Well, we were going back up to find Eric. Eric? He was Eric. We just happened to come across the tavern because for some reason we'd missed it before. So yeah, just follow our our marker. And it should take us around Here's a one. this way. Not like Drink last night too. We and supposedly they're just chilling on the beach. We saw the... Uh, the house that we ran into when we went a little bit off the, the path over to the left, west, and uh, thought that something terrible was happening there. So that may be an indication of what is to come in the future, or that may be an entirely different quest. We shall have to wait and see. There's more, speaking of, opposite direction or different directions. Go further to these, there is a different route we can take there. Also, fork the road here see some people or enemies all the way over here those look like some kind of insects and big ones at that has me intrigued oh uh, they're just intrigue warriors okay big yes but i was thinking maybe they were going to be a special kind of enemy you know a rare type of intrigue or a raucous maybe it would be worth pursuing them for that reason then but i, I don't think so also gives us further context as to what to expect on this island here, because still, I haven't run into much, at least from a combat standpoint at this stage. In theory, they are over here somewhere. Something happening over here, but that's outside the circle. Okay. Oh, there are drowners over here. And there are people hiding from those drowners. Let us save them. That is, that is not what I meant to do, but sure. Hey, don't touch us. Rude. Rude. Also rude. I mean, probably some effort spent to try to avoid the hits would perhaps uh, lead to us avoiding the hits. We... We, uh, yeah, I think, uh, there's one person now. swinging the sword there. Ah, but if not for me warning, you'd be herring bit about now. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about that. No, we do need your help. 
And uh, that is primarily to find Cirrus, of course. Thanks for your help. Did it once, maybe you can do it again. Well, I'll have to think about it. Busy the day me fishing got nets to mend. No time to fight monsters. It's not Drowners this time. It's Cirrus. I'm looking for her. Aye, fine looking girl. Can tell right away she's from a good clan. Left her sitting right here when I sailed out to bring in the morning catch. Okay, so uh, in that case, uh, both these things. So where did she go and why was she chatting with you? She say where she was headed. Uh, wouldn't tell a stranger, but we did risk our hides together. Went to Odeldrick's old family home. Yonder on the hill. Ah, uh, is that the the place that looked like it was haunted? The place that we were just talking about how we went into it before? But also, why was she talking to you? Any idea why she came here? She say what she was after or just admire the scenery? Just about our Yarl and his family. Okay, getting some inside info, I see. Thanks. Farewell. Apparently we can't push you any further than that. Uh, is there anything else over here that we might want to nab? There is this little... I don't know. If, yeah, I suppose it's a building. For a second it looked like it was just a, a tent more than anything. An overhang. Oh, and it's locked. Ooh, hold on. A broken ore. Oh boy. Just what I needed. How did you know? How did you know? Oh, we could also loot the, uh, the drowners too. We actually did not do that. I suppose we can make that happen. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, where exactly did that direct us then? Yeah, it is exactly the place where we were before. I suspected as much. It seemed like that was where that that place was going to tie into all this. Okay. Sure. So supposedly she is in there. But uh, as we saw before, it is a rather mountainous area. But I do think that we may need to loop around. Okay. And we'll just heal up the rest of our HP. And can we approach from this angle? This is pretty steep already. What? What is this? I'm not sure this is what we were looking for, necessarily. Though this does seem interesting. Um. Whoa! Hello. Okay. It's just not a full drop, but it's enough to, <laughs> to make you wonder. There's something up here. Not necessarily what we had in mind, but uh, this might actually still be the fastest way. It does seem like our quest marker is uh, indicating as such. Yeah, what is, what is up? This place, apparently, it is quite high up. Why are you here is maybe the other question. No, this is, oh no, this is the place, okay. This is the place. Yeah, so it, uh, it looks bad. So let's, let's save first. And then, is this door, no. Is there a door? Yes. Fresh footprints. Could be Saris's. That would be my guess. Um, the black liquid stuff that is dripping from the ceiling. Thoughts on that? Is it actually blood? Is it actually some kind of demon spectery juice that turns you into a monster whenever you touch it? Yeah, one of those, probably. Yeah, it's all over the place, in fact. Also, a, a trap door. We do not have the key for it at the moment. But, uh, hydration. Hydration is good. Get more of the, the water. Also, not liking the, the noises that are coming along with it. That wasn't what I was referring to. But, uh, but perhaps. So, whoa, so relevant. Out. Gotta get her out of here. 
Yeah, but something tells me it's not gonna be that simple. What? What happened? Where am I? Oh, my head. Pain's just awful. Got hit with something heavy. Geralt? Why are you here? Came to look for you. Croc's worried. Taking you home. I won't go until I help Ulrich. The sword. Where's the sword? I've, I've got to go back. Well, what You're not going anywhere. I carried you out of there a moment ago, half dead. I have to. You have to tell me what's going on. Yeah, we are still awfully low on the, the crucial details here. Why did you go into that house and what the heck is going on in the house? Why did you go in there? I wanted to help Udelrek. Sure, he was acting strangely, but I don't see how your stroll through a haunted house will help him. It would have if I'd only found the sword. Okay, so confirmation it is, or at least certainly appears to be, haunted. There's some valuable sword in there, but what is the deal about this sword? So what's this sword all about? It's Brokvar, the ancestral sword of Udelrek's clan. I needed to lift the curse that holds Udelrek. A curse? Long story. Years ago, Udelrek and his little brother butted heads over the sword. As custom has it, the clan's sword should go to the firstborn son, Udelrek. But his father gave Brokvar to his little brother, Aki. <laughs> Serious insult in these lands. Serious enough for Udelrek to break a sacred law here in Skellige. He openly questioned his father's decision. Guessing the old Jarl couldn't let it pass. They chained Udelrek to a pile, oh. up to his waist in the sea. Spent three days like that. When his punishment ended, he and Aki sailed out to fish. Yeah, something tells me some, uh, something bad happened when they went fishing. They weren't just uh, fishing on that trip. Uh, my guess is uh, his brother did not come back from that one, did he? Got a feeling this trip didn't end happily. Your feeling's right. There was an accident. Accident. A storm Air broke quotes. out and Aki fell overboard. Udelrek had his hands full with the sails. Didn't hear his brother until it was too late. Didn't hear? Or didn't want to hear? Some folk on the isle had the same doubt. But none would mention it aloud. Uh, so do you think Udelrek killed his brother? What do you think? Did Udelrek kill Aki? I don't want to jump to any conclusions. But I do think whatever happened at sea that day, well, it's affecting Udelrek right now. Powerfully so. And it could have something to do with that sword. But that's just a theory, so like... What do you actually want the sword for? What did you plan to do with the sword? I thought Aki's ghost would want it back. The brother's ghost? Long as I remember, folk have said Udelrek's the chosen one. The one the gods speak to. I believed it once. But now, considering certain things, I think he's just haunted. And it's his dead brother that's haunting him. Oh. Fantastic. Uh, where did you get that idea? Seems They're like a lot theory. of theorizing. A Not lot of hard facts. Laws just by thinking it. Don't care. I don't believe it's the gods talking. Have you seen him? He's covered in scars. Thought he earned those in battle. If you call the strife in his heart and head a battle, I've asked him about it. He said the voices command him to hurt himself for the glory of the gods. I think not. It's not the gods. It's Aki. Hmm. Do you think Aki's trying to exact some form of revenge by making him suffer? So you believe Aki's getting his revenge because Udelrik let him die? I've talked to Yort. He swears Udelrik didn't start hearing voices till after Aki's death. And I don't think Yort's mistaken. He knew both those boys from the cradle. I think we have to give Brokvar to Aki and he'll leave Udelrik alone. Not a bad idea. On condition it's a ghost we're dealing with. But something doesn't add up. What's uh -oh. that? Aki drowned at sea, said so yourself. But the ghost haunts this house. Aki and Udelrek both lived here. Maybe that's why. Thanks for your help, Geralt. But I've got to get the sword. Hold on. The Geralt's, Geralt's onto something here. It. Really? Thanks. So I can go see Udelrek? No chance. You're weak. Might pass out again along the way. Wait here. We'll go together. Find the sword. Okay, yes, but is Sarah just gonna chill for the moment? And yeah, I am still curious. Oh, not on this page, but on the. Come on, come on, on the glossary. 
characters. Udelric is a little bit more. The tale of the strife between Udelric and his brother Aki over the family sword threw new light on Jarl's mysterious problems. That the voices he heard demanded he injure himself suggested a vengeful spirit was involved. Yeah, so unfortunately Geralt didn't really get the chance to complete that thought there, but it seemed as though he was suggesting that because Aki died at sea and this ghost is haunting this house, that doesn't really add up, seemed to be what he was saying. That if the ghost died at, or if Aki died at sea, then the ghost would be somewhere out at sea, I guess is what he was trying to say. So this may not actually be a ghost. This might be something somewhat different and maybe more powerful. And I don't know in that case what it would be. Some other form of specter, presumably, but I, I don't know. Hey. What's up? Hello? How's it going? Howdy. Want a platter? Got a nice, shiny silver platter for you. Well, technically it's not silver, but... You know, it's the thought that counts, right? Something like that. Um, I'm thinking we're probably looking for a key to get down into that... Cellar? There it is. And, uh, well... You know... When did a bad thing ever happen in a cellar, right? Never. Never. Did it? Always good stuff. Always good stuff in the cellar. So, we're gonna be fine. Just don't worry about it, okay? Just don't worry about the dark, decrepit cellar in the haunted house with a haunted sword from a, a dude that may want to kill his brother. What could go wrong? Oh, that. That could go wrong. Whatever the heck that was. 